Next, I will be talking about inland wetland ecosystems of Sri Lanka. Wetlands are defined according to the Ramsar Convention. According to this, a wetland can be an area that is frequently flooded. You call it a fen. And it will contain brown deposits resembling soil. We call it peat, which consists of decaying plant matter. Or it can be an area containing water. It can be natural or artificial. It can be permanent or temporary and filled with water that is static or flowing. This water could be fresh, brackish or salt water. Wetlands also include areas of marine water, the depth of which should not exceed 6 meters at low tide. According to this Ramsar definition, wetlands of Sri Lanka can be divided into three main groups. Those are the inland freshwater wetlands, coastal wetlands and man-made wetlands. Inland freshwater wetlands would include rivers, streams, marshes, swamp forests and willows. Coastal wetlands would include lagoons, estuaries, mangroves, seagrass beds, salt marshes and coral reefs. Man-made wetlands include tangs, reservoirs, paddy fields and salt turns. We will be taking each one separately and discussing in detail in our next lessons. In this lesson, let's look at rivers and streams. There are 103 rivers in Sri Lanka. They begin from the central hills and they are perennial, that is they do not dry up. Small rivers in the dry zone are seasonal. Hardly any vegetation is found in running water. Let's look at marshes and swamp forests in this lesson. Marshes are found at Muthurajavela, Bellangvila, Akthidia Marsh and Sri Jayavadhanapura Kotle wetland area. Marshes are low-lying areas that receive water through surface runoff, groundwater seepage or flood water from rivers. They contain peat, that is a brown deposit resembling soil formed by decaying vegetation. Marshes have a lot of different types of amphibians, water birds and different fish species. We have Colocasia or Habarella, Eponegaton or Kikatia, reeds or pung as the main plant species. Let us look at the importance of marshes. Since they can hold rainwater, flooding is protected. When water is collected, waste products and toxic substances are detoxified by bacteria living here. As a result, the water is purified. Methane is released from marshes due to the action of these bacteria. Marshes offer shelter to many birds, fish and amphibians. And they offer nesting sites for migratory water birds. Now, in marshes, trees are not found and swarm forests are areas where you get the trees. Here, the forest vegetation is underwater for a short period of time in the year and these swamp forests are not common in Sri Lanka. We get a swamp forest called the Vaturana Swamp at Bulat Singhala located in the Kaluganga Basin. Welcome to Mumu Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about wetlands. Wetlands are aquatic ecosystems 
that are a transition between land and lakes, ponds, or other bodies of water. They are literally wet lands. An easy way to understand wetlands is to take a look at some. There are four main types of wetlands. Marshes are wetlands without trees and lots of grass. Marshes can often be found at the edge of lakes and streams where they form a transition between the aquatic and land ecosystems. Swamps are wetlands that has lots of trees. Fens are wetlands dominated by grasses. A bog is a wetland that accumulates peat, which is a deposit of dead plant material, and often you can find mosses in a bog. Wetlands are very productive ecosystems with great diversity of plants, insects, amphibians, reptiles, bird, fish, and mammals. Wetlands are also very nutrient dense and help with the water cycle and nitrogen cycle. So there we go, wetlands, land covered with water that provides food and important nutrients to the ecosystem. Thanks for watching, and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.